Hey, good evening, it's Pastor Mary. Uh, I hope a few of you will join me tonight. It is Tuesday, wow, May 26th. Can you believe it? We're almost to the end of the month. We got one, two, three, four, five, six days, less than a week to go. But this week for me will be a great week, exciting week. Sam is um, graduating on Thursday. So uh, very, very excited. Um, I'm letting a couple people know I am doing, hey, good evening, Kathy. I'm sure Bill is somewhere close behind. Um, I'm just telling my girlfriend who gets on Cheryl from Illinois that I'm doing devotions tonight, tonight, so she knows to join us if she can. Um, I'm glad to have you on. You're my one. You're my only. Uh, just got home a little while ago. I had to finish getting Samuel's clothes for the graduation. They, you know, they have, they have a dress code, but it's not that, well, for boys, I don't think it's that strict. Um, girls, of course, there's way more strictness with girls clothes, but for graduation, it's very strict. It's like black or blue pants, black or blue tie, a dark tie, white shirt only. Uh, and it's going to be so hot. It's outside. They're going to be miserable. Ugh. I, ho I hope they can enjoy some of it. I hope the people who talk don't talk too long. Because there's... A, I bet there's 350 to 400 graduates in his class. Which is... Let's see. My high school class was 35. Hey. Hey, Cheryl. I'm glad you joined. I was just talking about graduation. Uh, so we had, what, 33, 35 in our class, I think, that graduated. And Samuel's got at least 350, maybe 400. So his class is, what, 100 times our size? I mean, it's just, it's, no, I mean, it's more than 100. But it's just amazing to think about. Christopher, turn that down, please. He's on the computer. Christopher has his last day of school tomorrow. He gets out at noon, so I'll go pick him up. I'm working at home tomorrow. I got lots of stuff to do tonight and tomorrow to get ready for the last hit him to send a few little thank you notes to the teachers. Samuel, of course, had graduation practice today, which he said was three hours long in the heat, no water till the end. Not too fun. I don't I don't remember our practice, but we were inside because our our we were able to be in our gym. Um, and then I think there's, well, I don't know that there's could have been inside before anyway because they're such a big class. And they, they have two gyms now at their school, but neither one would be big enough to have a graduation in. So, but they weren't at the, so they're at the NASCAR stadium, which is in our county. That's where graduation is. They've had a graduation every night since last Monday during the week because there's enough high schools that they've been having a graduation per night. As I met a mom, I think I shared this. Our class, my kids had 325 per class. Yes, a very different world from us. We knew everybody in our class. We knew every teacher. We knew every staff member. We knew, we knew every middle schooler. We knew every bus driver. We knew everybody. Like we knew each other. We right. We were. It was close. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. I wouldn't trade it. The only thing I wish we had was drama. Because uh, we only had it our freshman year. I was in the freshman. I was in the drama my freshman year. But we didn't have drama. The rest of high school. Um, I don't know what else I would have wanted. I mean we had a great school. We had a great high school. I loved our school. I loved West Pike High. I was very proud to go to West Pike High. Which no longer exists right? No longer exists. So oh goodness. Well alright. So I'm going to go ahead and do devotions. And then I'll put a note up to tell people we did it tonight because I don't know. Hey, April, how are you? I'm glad you're on tonight. Because um, I had said last week I was going to do devotions on Tuesday. I wasn't sure about the rest of the week. I'm not doing tomorrow or, th or Thursday's graduation. So I'm not doing tomorrow. I'm not doing Thursday. Friday will be Friday fun night. It'll be my brother Tim, our friend Brian from Bloomington, Illinois. And David and Samuel and Christopher. I will be gone because I have a wedding rehearsal. 
Uh, so I um, am officiating at a wedding on Friday, Saturday. Uh, too many things. The rehearsal's Friday. The wedding is Saturday. Our first service inside is Sunday. And Monday is Memorial Day and Sam's graduation party. So there's something big every day coming, coming now. So anyway, all right. So I'm going to read the Monday because it looks really, really good. I was just reading it from Christ in Our Home Devotions. And it's, about, it's called Jesus and Me. The verse uh, for it is, To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good, verse 7. And it's 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11. And I had looked it up and, oh, wait a minute, I marked it. 12, 4 to 11. Okay, so I'm going to read this. Now, there are a variety of gifts for the same Spirit, and there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who acti activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by one Spirit. To another, I said faith. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the discernment of spirits. To another various kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individ individually just as the Spirit chooses. And I'll read you the verse, but I'll read it again because I usually read it now. Verse 7 is what she's concentrating on. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. And uh, Pastor Sue Gamlin writes this. The congregation where I had grown up asked me to preach for its 100th anniversary. I love this church. When I preached, I talked about how being a community in Christ had carried us through times of challenge and celebration. I said that we are bound together as Jesus' body to love, serve, and grow in grace. Then the choir sang a closing song. Though surely it was well-intentioned, the message proclaimed in the anthem was, was that, after all, it's just Jesus and me. That's the temptation, isn't it? Jesus and me. If I could reduce my life in Christ to the two of us, we think things would be easier. Then perhaps we slide to another thought. I must be closer to Jesus than others. Oops. Paul wrote a gathering of Jesus, wrote to a gathering of Jesus' followers who were arguing about the gifts of the Spirit, who had them, who didn't, and which gifts were better than others. It was to them that he proclaimed that each of us is given the Spirit for the good of the entire community. It's not Jesus and me, it's Jesus and all of us. And the prayer is, Lord Jesus, thank you for the gift of your spirit, which binds us together for the benefit of all. Amen. And prayer concern those who are lonely. Well, I really love that because I really think that is really important that we often think it's just about Jesus and me. And at times we can really feel like it's just Jesus and me, especially when we feel very alone. I know someone tonight, special intention, who I know is feeling very alone and is struggling a great deal. Uh, who I talked to several times today and trying to encourage her. And um, I need to help her remember she's not alone, that Jesus is there with her. But she is part of the larger body. And that's the thing. At times when we're struggling, I think it can be easy to think there is no one. But there is. And sometimes it's surprising who the person or persons are who are there for us, who care about us, who... I mean, I've been surprised. I, um, many of you know that, I mean, I've served in a variety of ways in ministry. And when we moved back to Georgia in 2014, in 2015, I started serving at a different church almost every year uh, for a while as I was doing interim ministry. And um, I served one quite large congregation. They worship 300 on a weekend uh, around that or a little bit more. Um, and I, re and I love the congregation. I enjoy being there. Hey, Jeannie, good evening. I'm glad you're here. But I remember when I left the congregation, you know, when a church is that large, it, you know, people's faces, you may know a lot of the names, but you don't know everybody. Like you don't, you may, you know, you have people that you're close with cause you work with them. You serve on teams with them. You fellowship with them. 
And then there's people that you like greet and maybe say something to on Sunday, but you don't know them as well. And and I was surprised um, when I when I left there. I you know usually when I leave a congregation, I receive a number of notes and cards and sometimes gifts and um, and I read every card, every card. And, um, but I remember getting a card from a couple that I knew, but I didn't know them especially well. And they just wrote me such a nice, nice note about how thankful they were for me and everything. And it made me realize that, you know, we may not be close to everybody in the body, in the body of the church that we are a part of, but we are still there for each other. And sometimes we may have a more of a relationship or maybe have given more care than we realize to someone that maybe we don't know as well. Um, I mean, I'm at a congregation now that I have, it's, it's small enough that I know everybody. I know when they're there. I know when they're not there. Uh, I know every visitor. Um, but I've been trying, you know, I want to get to know people more. Um, and the, for me, besides fellowship events, one of the best ways is coffee hours or, um, but also visiting with people. I, um, I got to have lunch with Rita Johnson today, uh, and she's just a delightful, delightful woman and, um, and I've served with her on council and she, you know, she's just amazing, but it was, it was just so nice to have that time together and to know each other better and, Really, I think when we get to know each other better, we feel more that body of Christ. But, you know, it's easy to think our faith is just about us and Jesus. It's it's much bigger than that. It's much more inclusive. It's much more, it's our, the church community you're a part of. It's your family. It's, um, you know, people in your life who, uh, of faith. I mean, the body of Christ is so big and we are just, we are in the small parts, the microcosms groups of the body of Christ, but we're, we're, we need each other and we need Jesus together. And, you know, I mean, worshiping, we can worship alone. We can worship with one or two, but, you know, being with our community is, is an amazing thing. And so being back together this Sunday, uh, in the same space together to hear, people's voices during the service. I said last week, you know, I'm tired of hearing myself say all the replies, all the parts for everything alone. I know everybody's saying them, but I can't hear them. And it will be, I, I won't be surprised if I cry because it'll be so lovely to hear other people's voices um, together with mine and just the, uh, that reminder. Because um, we have been community in a different way and that's great but the will experience community and, and yes, things are slow and no, we're, you know, maybe we're not moving as fast as other churches or other places, but we're doing our best and we're just asking for people to have a little patience and stop being all about me, me, me. I guess that's one of the things driving me crazy, not necessarily at church, but, um, in the world, so many people are about, well, it's bothering me. It's taking away my freedom. I'm like, Sorry, I just want to say get over yourself. You know, it's not going to kill you to to look out for somebody else for a little while. So, sorry, I'll get off my soapbox. But, um, so, you know, we just need to look out for each other. We need to care about each other. We need to be there for each other. We don't have to agree about everything or see the world the same. But we are, we are called to be, it's bigger than just Jesus and me. It's all of us. And it's remembering that and be reminded of that. Uh, together. So just encourage you, you know, somebody comes to mind, pray for them, reach out to them, let them know you're thinking of them. Um, and, and know that you're not alone and know that Jesus is with you, but know that the community is with you too. So, um, that's it for that tonight. Um, I, so my friend Cheryl's on here and we were, um, she was one of my dearest friends in high school and still, Still one of my dearest friends, even though I haven't got to see her in a while because of COVID. Hopefully, we'll get to see each other this summer when I'm back. Um, I'm really, really hoping and praying for that, uh, that we can make that work, Cheryl. And Jeannie, my cousin Jeannie, I'm hoping to see her too. 
So, well, thank you, Betty. I really appreciate that. I just saw what you wrote. Thank you. So I hope to see you, Cousin Jeannie. I hope can get over. I will get over to see you. I'll be back several times, so I will get back to see you. I'll be back for Aunt Betty's celebration of the life in August uh, and a short visit in July. I'll be there a little bit longer, probably in August. So I will get I will get there. I will be in touch, and I will get to see you. And Cheryl, we will definitely, we will definitely get together. I promise. You're on my list. I'll be getting a hold of you. I promise. So but it's kind of fun, you know, graduation. It's really hard, you know. Nobody lives on anybody else's timeline. I, you know, I'm an old mom and that's okay. I always remind Samuel, I said, hey, you know, if I'd been young, a younger mom, you wouldn't be you, you know. You were meant to be here when you came. And all I want is as much time with you as I can have. And, um... I'm just real proud of him, and like every parent should be proud of their kids, and um, I'm sure I'm going to cry a bunch on Thursday. Uh, I want to cry now, thinking about it, but, um, it, you know, teenage years are not easy years, you know? We all go through it. I went through a tough time. Samuel went through a tough time, but he's come out the other end. He's doing great. I'm really proud of him, um, and I think he's amazing. And I'm really, really thrilled for him that he will graduate on Thursday. And hopefully it won't be three hours long like it, like the practice was today. Because uh, it's going to be hot here. It's in the 90, been in the 90s. It's at 7 o'clock at night. It's going to be hot. So we're going to, I have to check to see if we can carry in our water. I ordered and I got my new um, bag today to carry my stuff in because it's a clear bag it has to be a clear bag in order to carry things through so I've got a clear bag uh so I've got to pull it out and look at it I'll probably put it, I'll share a picture on Facebook about it um because I've never had a clear uh bag before you know like personal bag before so that's what I have to have in order to to do it so Anyway, it's it's less than 48 hours away, and I can hardly believe he's going to graduate, and um, I'm really excited. So I'm really excited for him. Uh, still remembering, thinking about our graduation, and um, I, I shared the other night um, the song from Beach Boys, We'll Remember Always, Graduation Day, which came out before we were in high school, but it was a song, I think that our choir saying, I thought they sang at our graduation, maybe they sang at one of the others, because I went to at least a couple other graduations when I was in high school, and then of course I went to my brother's, all my brother's graduations, which Tim, Cheryl's sister Rita, and my brother Tim were in the same class, they were the year behind us, my brother Tom, which Cheryl's sister Tammy, or Tam, and my brother Tom were in the same class, and then my brother Ted, he was way behind us, way behind us, so um, but no brother in that, right? Um, so anyway, yeah, thinking back on high school days, oh my goodness, I know they were a while ago, but they were great, they were great, and, um, we will, we will see each other again, and I will see you all this summer, those of you on here who don't live here in Georgia, I will see you, Cheryl, I will see you, Jeannie, and I look forward to it very, very much, so. Uh, I do have, I have a very specific prayer. So a friend of my brother, Tim, um, Rock Me, who is just a lovely, lovely woman. She, Rock Me was a classmate of my brother Tim's in seminary. She, um, started a, a program in Kansas City, Kansas called Stitching Change. It's an amazing program. It teaches women, um, primarily I think women of color, uh, sewing skills and or and or they may already be seamstresses. But what they do is they repurpose like sign like vinyl banners or you know different kind of banners and um, they Kansas City is Missouri is known for these big banners like in cities you know how they have the big banners and they hang them up and they uh take they've gotten some of those and they've repurposed them and they've made bags with them and in fact 
my brother Tim, excuse me, will be bringing it tomorrow. There was a banner for my mom's um, uh, funeral because uh, she had a really beautiful celebration of life. It was amazing. They had all these different pictures of her and they had an Afghan with pictures of her on it. And I have a picture of her as a young woman in my house from her. And they made a calendar that I have. And uh, they just did all these really neat things with it. And um, so Tim took the banner. Hey, good evening, Paula. Tim took the banner, my mom, to Stitching Change. And they they cut out the side panels with my mom's picture on them. And they made a, a bag, a shopping bag for me to use. So Tim, excuse me, is bringing that tomorrow. So anyway, I've got I've met Rock Me a number of times, and um, when I've gone back to visit Tim, and because um, Rock Me and her husband John are very very close friends of my brother Tim, and excuse me. So Rock Me though, I she had asked for prayers. I said, do you have any specific areas you want me to pray for? Because I said we've been praying, asking for prayers for India with COVID and with um, Tess getting there, PP excuse me, PPE getting there for the medical professionals and the vaccine getting there and for the COVID to go down, the COVID vaccine, the COVID uh, pe people getting sick with COVID would go down. I, and I said, I've been praying for India and for Myanmar. Myanmar has been, had um, the military take over the country and that's really been a big problem. And so anyway, uh, I said, do you have any areas that you would like me to include. And she said, Uk Rul, U-K-H-R-U-L, and the people of Manipur and Nagaland. And I'm gonna look that up. She said, please pray for the health workers. They are dying and that is a scary situation. Rock Me's family is there um, and she has not got to see her parents in a while. And they stay in touch and I think they're able to FaceTime or, you know, um, message video or something like that but um so she has asked for prayers for those places for um and i'll, I'll put that up manapur and nagaland the people of manapur and Ma nagaland n-a-g-a-l-a-n-d and I, i'll have to ask her how to say it ukrul u-k-h-r-u-l so if you will please keep them in your prayers and just pray for Especially, you know, you got to have health workers. I mean, people can't get what they need or get better if you don't have health workers. So, so especially ask for prayers for them. Um, ask for prayers for um, several special intentions, people who are going through some tough times right now and who are really missing family, who can't see them because they're in another country. Um, and for a situation, a very difficult situation that I'm trying to help with. Um, and just praying for those, continue to pray for families who've been affected by uh, the by COVID. And um, somebody says the COVID, I can't remember who, and I almost said that, but um, pray for Paula. We're praying for you for your results, that they will be good. Praying for my friends, Deb and Tom. For Tom's health and they can get to go to Mayo Clinic to try to find out what to do um, and get a better diagnosis of what's happened with him and a better prognosis of what to do um, to give him a better life. Pray for, I am ask for prayers for those who struggle with sleep. I know several people who really struggle with sleep and I just pray that they could have a good rest tonight because I, I was saying um, the other day, you know, in some ways to me, sleep is like a miracle drug. And by that, what I mean is, if you're having a really rough day and you get a really good night's sleep, often, and now if you're going through grief, depression, you know, that may not change. You may wake up and you still feel that. But I find for myself, if I've had a really busy day and I'm, and maybe there's been some real issues or, struggles or you know I've, I've been upset or whatever that if I have a good night's sleep um I wake up and I feel so much better I feel like wow it's almost like the brain uh, my brain gets reset because the sleep helps so much with with that and and that's why I call it a miracle drug at times and so 
I know that not getting sleep is really, really hard. And so I just really pray for those um, who struggle with sleep, especially those that I think in my heart uh, who are really having a hard time with sleep and those who can't get a diagnosis of what's going on with them. We pray for them. Pray for uh, Jamie, like with Paula, uh, who has been dealing with cancer and all those dealing with cancer. Um, we pray for those who are missing family, uh, who have lost family, who are not able to be there for graduation. Um, it, that is bittersweet. And I just, um, I'm thankful, you know, I, my girlfriend Natalie's daughter graduates in a few weeks. Our uh, friends, uh, the Jeanettes, their son Dylan graduates any day if he hasn't already. Um, we, you know, Anne Marie from Bloomington graduates. We know a lot, uh, Ryan Lucky graduated from Illinois. I mean, we just, because of Sam's friends, you know, in his grade all these years, we know a lot of wonderful kids who are graduating this year. So I just wish them all the best. I wish those graduating the best and that they'll be able to find good jobs in their fields and they'll have, have what they need. I pray for those who are trying to better their lives. I pray for those who are struggling. Pray for those who feel alone. Uh, pray for those who don't feel Jesus is, Jesus is with them, that their faith is really struggling. And I pray just for the body of Christ, that we will stay open to one another, to hear each other, to listen to one another, to love each other for who we are, even when we don't agree, and to find ways to really listen to each other and to work to make this world a better place to live. So, okay, well, that's it for tonight. Thank you so much. I, um, right now, I plan to be on next Tuesday, but I'm not sure because I may be off. But I will plan on being on next Tuesday. Like I said, there will be Friday fun night. I'm going to take off tomorrow night and Thursday night. Uh, so I will plan on being back next Tuesday unless I put a note up differently. I'll put up a note either way, but more than likely, I'll put a note up and say, hey, come join me for devotions. I miss seeing you. So, um, just want to say if you want to come to church on Sunday, we will have church inside. We we should have plenty of room for anybody who wants to come. Uh, we, we will work on things for those who may have health issues about masks. So, Kathy Gates, you are approved. Um, so, please call and sign up. Um, we will also, there's a few people who are wanting to stay outside. So, we will have service over your radio and we will be online. So those who watch us online will be able to watch us online as well. Just pray that we get the, the one little thing we have to get worked out is because our music is recorded for this month because we're not singing, we'll be listening to music, we'll be speaking, but um, we have to make sure that the recorded music will be able to come over on the live stream. And I, I think we'll be able to work that out. Sam, I think we'll figure that out, but um, that's the one little glitch we're trying to make sure we have have all worked out so so please come join us online in person inside our fellowship hall or out in our parking lot we we look forward to you all coming and joining us so we'll have a great night have a great day tomorrow for those of you who watch tomorrow i pray you have good rest tonight i pray that your prayers will be answered especially those of you who might be struggling with something uh, i pray for good rest uh pray for pastor rob oh he's recovering from surgery Okay, Betty, we will definitely pray for Pastor Rob. I didn't know he was having surgery. We will definitely be praying for him. So thank you so much. I will I will definitely include him. So thank you for that. So, And now before we go along our way, I pray that God will bless you to be a blessing to others. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, have a great night, great day tomorrow, and um, I'll see you all on Sunday some way, somehow. Have a great rest of the week. Take care. Good night. And have, if you're traveling for Memorial Day, have a great, safe travel for Memorial Day and enjoy family and friends. All right. Take care. Good night.